Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers in partnership with Hydra Creative to bring you this video which is all about changing colours in photos. I'm going to take you through two different workflows. One is if you just wish to change the colour of something in an image just to see what it might look like in a different colour, we'll start with that workflow. And then perhaps you have something that you need to match an exact colour to. We'll take a look at that as the second workflow. So this is the file that I'm going to start off with inside of Photoshop um, and definitely need to go to the Windows menu and then open up the Adjustments panel and then also open up the Layers panel as well. Those uh, kind of key panels would be really important uh, for this exercise. So if I go to my Adjustments panel, uh, go down to the middle row, far left hand side and then left click to apply a Hue Saturation Adjustment. Those um, controls appear then inside the Properties panel here. And then you'll notice that in the layers panel, I also have that added as a new adjustable, non-destructive edit above the original artwork. Now, if I was just to drag the hue slider left and right in here to change the hue, that obviously affects all the colors in the image. Sometimes, only sometimes, that can be quite effective. Now, I'm gonna reset that because I want to target just the orange in the original product. So I'll click on the reset button down at the bottom there of the properties panel. What you can instead do is rather than creating a very complex selection of the thing you want to recolor, you can go to the target adjustment tool. Here, it's usually always shown as a pointy finger icon, and it's usually always found underneath the word preset in the properties panel for each given adjustment layer. If I left click on that, and then hover over the color that I want to edit, that will have to be really kind of a mid-tone of that color. Don't go for the darkest version of that color or the lightest pick kind of an average version of that color. So right in the middle of the bottle in here, if I just click and hold down the mouse and drag left and right to alter, it will actually alter the saturation slider, which will change the color intensity. But if instead on the Mac, you hold down the command key on the PC, that will be the control key. What you can do is keep that key held down and then click and hold down the left mouse button and drag to the right or to the left hand side. And notice that when you do, you'll be changing the hue slider. So I haven't released the key on the keyboard or the left mouse button. I'm just dragging my cursor to the left hand side of the screen ever so slightly or dragging towards the right hand side. And you can see then that the hue slider is moving as well left and right. If I let go of the mouse and then let go of the command key or the control key, what you can then do is take your cursor to the hue slider and without having the burden having to hold down the key and keep dragging with the mouse, you can simply go to the hue slider and drag this around to change the appearance of the thing that you want. In this case, it's the orange bottle. Now, some colors will work fine in here. You might find that when you alter it, take a look at this, by pushing it to the far end of the color spectrum for it was, then it's going to struggle maybe sometimes. And we've got this kind of... Um, Fuchsia color in the middle here, and it's kind of bleeding out to purple on the outside. We're asking Photoshop to do a lot of work here. So some colors will work fine as a change, others won't. You can obviously pick the color that you're looking for. One thing to mention as well with the hue slider is that notice that the slider itself is pointing to what is a green. That obviously isn't the case with the bottle here. It's kind of a deep red color. So what happens is, and how Photoshop works with this is, it takes the original color, obviously, and applies your modification. But if you want to see how you're going to change it, don't look at the color that's on the hue slider in here. Take a look at the graph down at the bottom. So when I drag this hue slider around, notice that it is actually the slider or the hue spectrum slider down at the bottom that's changing. So your original colors in your image are sat in the upper section, that little very tiny spectrum of color at the top. That's the original color that you're editing. And what you've changed it to is the one lower down here. So now you can see that the warm orangey red color that was in the original flask has now been changed to this kind of yellow color. So that's the thing to look for. Very misleading um, is the hue slider there in this scenario. So dragging this around, I can alter this to a different color if I wish to. So perhaps um, let's go for, um, yeah, I think I might go for a yellow in here. You could obviously increase or decrease the intensity of that color. So if you want something that's a little bit more muted, and particularly if the color it looks really strong and unnatural, going to the saturation slider, you can alter that as well. You can take some of the color out there. You can give it a slightly more muted version of that. Obviously, dragging the slider towards the right-hand side increases the color intensity. If you want a little bit more of a vivid color in there, Dragging and then making that value for saturation higher is also worth doing as well to try out if you wish to. Now I'm going to swipe back to that and type in zero and press return. 
And then if I go to the lightness slider, this one's very powerful. So you'll need to move this ever so slight to make quite a big edit with this one. So again, you can darken down. It is just adding black into that area or dragging to the right hand side and really brighten it up. As I say, it is a very kind of powerful slider is lightness inside of there. You don't need to move it much to make quite a big difference. Always with these things, you can go to the layers panel then afterwards and then click on the eyeball icon. You can see a before and you can see an after inside of there. So if all you want to do is experiment with colors, then this is a nice, efficient way to do it. It doesn't require any lengthy selections. And, um, and there you go. That is the process itself. Now, in terms of something that you might need to specifically match, I'm going to go to the other image in here, which is called Porsche. I have a, a slightly older looking image in here of a Porsche and I wish to change this. I've got nothing against orange. I realize I'm changing orange in both these images to something else. But I'm going to go for a green this time and um, I've got an exact color that I need to match. So I'm going to use a very similar technique. Now I need to sample the original orange and because I want to match it to a, a kind of a specific green in here, I need reference for that in the image. So again, you'll notice in here that my background layer is all there is to this document. I'm going to go down to my tools panel, click and hold down. I'm going to pick the rounded rectangle in here. This is going to create a vector shape within which I can just drop a color. So if I click on that tool, make sure at the top, then I'm going to create a shape here. At the moment, it's just going to give it a fill of black and a stroke of the border around the outside will be set to none. I'm going to, going to click and hold down the mouse, drag across this region here and then let go. Notice now that I have a new shape layer inside of here with black as the color. I can change that then. So I want to reference the original color in the car. Now, if I go to my picker in here for my color picker, that will allow me to open up the dialog box, but I can ignore that completely and then hover my cursor over a region of the car that I want to sample the current color from. And again, don't pick a really bright color for the highlights on the metalwork in there. Don't go for a really dark orange in there. In this case, I want to pick something on the side of the car that's kind of in that mid range of oranges. Left click. That will then show that the new color has been sampled and picked up inside of the color picker in here. It won't, unfortunately, uh, at the moment inside of Photoshop, change the color of the box straight away. It would be great if it did, but it doesn't. It will only do that once you click OK. And so here um, in this pop up dialog box, which I'm going to get rid of in a sec, but just to mention any of my recently sampled colors and notice that they start here on the far left hand side. That's the color I've just sampled will appear across the top and that's for my fill color of the box. I'll hit return to make that disappear. And I'm going to switch to my uh, move tool at the top of the tools panel. and I need to create a copy of this. So I'm, uh, I'm going to rename this and call this um, current or current color. Hover my cursor over that layer, hold down the alt key and then alt click and drag and it'll create a duplicate. That duplicate will be higher up and above. And this is the one that I want to have for the sample color. So again, now notice that I don't have options across the top of the options bar to change the fill properties of that. So you'll have to pick a vector editing tool. I'll go back and say, click on the path selection tool or even the brown rectangle tool that I had active previously to make that shape. If I go in here, click in the fill, then go into the color picker. This opens up on screen and now I can add in my specific RGB. So for the red, green and blue, I'm going to type in here for my new one, 29 for the red. Hit the tab key to down, go down to the green field. And for that one, type in uh, 210. And then for the next one, down finally to the blue field. And that one is going to have a 27 for a value in there. Uh, that's the color I'm going to match, this uh, spectacular green color. I'm going to click OK. And that's what the color will be for that particular swatch now in here. So I've got my reference. I've got my original color and my reference. I'm then going to double click in that layer and then call this new and press return so that I, uh, I don't get confused and then switch to my move tool. These need to be overlapping. So uh, here I've got um, my new color and my existing color. The two things overlap. I'll then go to my layers panel and then left click on the layer called current because then when I had the hue saturation, which I'll do now from the adjustments panel and click on that, that hue saturation adjustment as all adjustment layers do by default only affect the layers lower down. So I can keep the appearance when I alter colors on screen of the green that I want to sample. And then when I do make any changes to the color, I'm going to change the color of the orange of the car that will also change the matching color swatch as well. And then from here, I'll zoom in a touch closer to the car. And again, then I'm going to go to my target adjustment tool, 
Left click on that and again sample in a very similar area to where I did to create the color swatch. Left click this time. So it's just a left click and that tells Photoshop just to sample that type of color, that orange in there. And again, very similar to what we saw in the previous example with the flask that was orange. Um, all the colors that will be edited right now are in between the two inner brackets and where it falls off and that effect disappears and it doesn't affect the rest of the image is from the inner to the outer brackets. All then that remains is for me to probably at this point take a look at these two color swatches in here. I need to get my orange one to match the green one. So if I drag this along here like so, I'll eventually start making this little bit green in here like so, getting across. Getting the green color inside of there. And then um, there's a little bit of back and forth to do this. So it's quite an intense green, really. Probably then I want to darken that down so I can do that as well. So I'm taking the lightness slider. And when those two colors look like they match and I don't see a gap between them. So here I've got them roughly to the place where I need them, but I can still see an ever so slight seam between these two swatches again i can zoom a little bit closer to these and then um, i can probably swipe over the number here for hue and then use the cursor keys to tap up and down and then it's maybe just a, a case of going between the hue and the lightness in there to change that i'm tapping up in here and increasing this value it's moving further away from what i want so maybe tapping down and reducing that value it's getting back closer to what i want in there I think that's about where I need it to be. Again, then I'll jump back down to the lightness, tap down with that one, and I think that is about spot on. Um, you'll notice now, if I hover my spacebar over and just click and drag, we have now all of the orange in this image um, are applied and edited, um, all looking good, fairly happy with that. If you feel that there are parts of this that need a little bit more, so you're going to struggle with fringe pixels like these. So across the top of the car, these are really tricky to sort of tweak because it's not just the orange of the top of the car, but it's where the orange transitions into the blue sky. They're quite tricky to get rid of, but we can get Photoshop to help us with that. I can now hover my cursor over the inner brackets and I could... I could, for example, click and drag and move them around. It affects different colors in the image. I don't want to do that. I'm fairly happy with where it was before, but I can pull these brackets out to expand the region of the image where it affects. Pull the brackets out further. Same on this side as well. Now, it's just slightly a bit forgiving because the image in here, it essentially it has um, blues for the sky and we've got some neutrals in the tire, which are black and the chrome work as well. So this is a fairly forgiving image as it is. So I can pull these out further and I can sample more colors and just take away some of that fringe that's along the edge of the car in there. And I can't pull them out too far because it's gonna start affecting things that we don't want to. If I run into the blue over here, we're gonna start affecting the sky, but I'm fairly happy with that. You know, I've got a good match for that color. What I can then do, final step is to use a layer mask because the obviously this color change has changed the, the lights at the back, the amber lights in here for the bright lights to green as well because they were obviously of that warm orangey color. So if I zoom in here, get a good close-up view of the lights, just move my panels out of the way in here, like so, get a good clear view of those. Then what I can do is, um, well, just show you here with a layers panel close to these. I'm going to hide these swatches here, hide this one as well. And it's this that I need to edit. I need to left click and make sure that the layer mask for that hue saturation is still active in there. And then I can paint in black in there to hide or conceal. So if I pick up my brush tool by tapping the B key on the keyboard, just like so, brush key, uh, the brush tool. And then if I go to the uh, pop up here for the brush tip, obviously that is going to be a really small brush. You can see here just hovering over the top of the where the light is. It's very small. I'm going to make sure that I've got a soft round brush active increase the size of that brush you can hover outside of that pop-up in there to see the size of it i'm going to make that quite big to start off with a little bit bigger and then obviously the hardness needs to be set to uh, zero in there i want a nice soft brush to start off with hit the return key make sure that i'm painting with black in here to conceal so i need to go to the icon just here to switch these round so i'm painting with black as my foreground color and then click and drag across the light in there and get rid of that in there like so to reveal the original color of the light uh, so that larger brush in there will allow me to remove that in the middle. I can then go back to the brush tip menu, set the hardness of the brush up quite high this time, just reduce the size of it down, press the return key, 
and then work into the corners in there just to return all of the light in there back to its original colors. So I'm just clicking, holding down the mouse here and dragging along up across the top and then just working up to where the chrome work is on the light. You can also tap the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard, which are adjacent to the P key, P for Peter, uh, left square bracket key to make the brush smaller. And then you can make it much, much smaller to work into the details of the corners like this. And then you can also tap the uh, right square bracket key to make the brush size bigger. And then just work along here. I mean, this region here is all dark and black and uh, it will really pretty much have no effect, the hue saturation there because it's too dark and there's very little color in there to be edited. Is that originally? Yes, it was. So I need to go back. I don't need to edit that bit. I was just double checking. Best to be sure, of course. Um, and there with it done, that is my color matched for my Porsche. So that is how you do it, folks, to match uh, an exact color. Um, uh, we've got in there originally those two shape layers with the current color and the new color. And then by adding your hue saturation to the image, it affects the photograph. It also affects the current color as a nice flat swatch. And then with those two overlapping, it allows you to be able to match them very, very closely in there. So that's it, folks. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, farewell.